Nativism is the political policy of promoting the interests of native inhabitants against those of immigrants, including by supporting immigration restriction measures. In scholarly studies, nativism is a standard technical term. Those who hold this political view, however, do not typically accept the label. Dindar wrote, Nativists do not consider themselves as nativists. For them it is a negative term and they rather consider themselves as patriots. Topic. Arguments for immigration restriction According to Fetzer 2000, opposition to immigration commonly arises in many countries because of issues of national, cultural, and religious identity. The phenomenon has been studied especially in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and the United States, as well as in continental Europe. Thus nativism has become a general term for opposition to immigration based on fears that the immigrants will distort or spoil existing cultural values. In situations where immigrants greatly outnumber the original inhabitants, nativistic movements can allow cultural survival. The claim that immigrants can swamp a local population is related to birth rate relative to nationals. Contemporary opponents of immigration blame it for such problems as unemployment, crime especially through gangs, harm to the environment, housing shortage, and overwhelming social services such as hospitals, police. Immigration restrictionist sentiment is typically justified with one or more of the following arguments and claims about immigrants. Government expense. Government expenses may exceed tax revenue relating to new immigrants. Language, isolate themselves in their own communities and refuse to learn the local language. Employment, acquire jobs that would have otherwise been available to native citizens, depressing native employment, create an oversupply of labor, depressing wages. Patriotism, damage a sense of community and nationality. Environment, increase the consumption of scarce resources, their move from low to high pollution economies increases pollution. Welfare, make heavy use of social welfare systems. Overpopulation, may overpopulate countries. Culture, can swamp a native population and replace its culture with their own. Housing, increase in housing costs, migrant families can reduce vacancies and cause rent increases. Topic. By country. Topic. Australia. Many Australians opposed the influx of Chinese immigrants at time of the 19th century gold rushes. When the separate Australian colonies formed the Commonwealth of Australia in 1901, the new nation adopted White Australia as one of its founding principles. Under the White Australia policy, entry of Chinese and other Asians remained controversial until well after World War II, although the country remained home to many long established Chinese families dating from before the adoption of White Australia. By contrast, most Pacific Islanders were deported soon after the policy was adopted, while the remainder were forced out of the canefields where they had worked for decades. Hostility of native born white Australians toward British and Irish immigrants in the late 19th century was manifested in a new party, the Australian Natives Association. Since early 2000, opposition has mounted to asylum seekers arriving in boats from Indonesia. Brazil The Brazilian elite desired the racial whitening of the country, similarly to Argentina and Uruguay. The country encouraged European immigration, but non-white immigration always faced considerable backlash. On July 28, 1921, representatives Andrade Bezerra and Cincinnato Braga proposed a law whose Article 1 provided, "...the immigration of individuals from the black race to Brazil is prohibited." On October 22, 1923, Representative Fidelis Reis produced another bill on the entry of immigrants, whose fifth article was as follows, "...the entry of settlers from the black race into Brazil is prohibited. For Asian immigrants there will be allowed each year a number equal to 5% of those residing in the country." 
In the 19th and 20th centuries, there were negative feelings toward the communities of German, Italian, Japanese, and Jewish immigrants, who conserved their language and culture instead of adopting Portuguese and Brazilian habit so that nowadays Brazil has the biggest communities in the Americas of speakers of German and Venetian, were seen as particularly tendentious to form ghettos, had high rates of endogamy in Brazil, it is regarded as usual for people of different backgrounds to miscegenate, among other concerns. It affected more harshly the Japanese, because they were Asian, and thus seen as an obstacle of the widening of Brazil. Oliveira Viana, a Brazilian jurist, historian and sociologist described the Japanese immigrants as follows. They Japanese are like sulfur, insoluble. The Brazilian magazine, O Malho, in its edition of December 5, 1908 issued a charge of Japanese immigrants with the following legend. The government of São Paulo is stubborn. After the failure of the first Japanese immigration, it contracted 3,000 yellow people. It insists on giving Brazil a race diametrically opposite to ours." In 1941, the Brazilian Minister of Justice, Francisco Campos, defended the ban on admission of 400 Japanese immigrants in São Paulo and wrote. Their despicable standard of living is a brutal competition with the country's worker, their selfishness, their bad faith, their refractory character, make them a huge ethnic and cultural cyst located in the richest regions of Brazil." Some years before World War II, the government of President Getúlio Vargas initiated a process of forced assimilation of people of immigrant origin in Brazil. The Constitution of 1934 had a legal provision about the subject. The concentration of immigrants anywhere in the country is prohibited, the law should govern the selection, location and assimilation of the alien." The assimilationist project affected mainly German, Italian, Japanese and Jewish immigrants and their descendants. During World War II they were seen as more loyal to their countries of origin than to Brazil. In fact, there were violent revolts in the Japanese community of the states of São Paulo and Piranha when Emperor Hirohito declared that Japan surrendered and he was not a deity, which was thought as a conspiracy trying to hurt Japanese honor and strength. Nevertheless, it followed hostility from the government. The Japanese-Brazilian community was strongly marked by restrictive measures when Brazil declared war against Japan in August 1942. Japanese Brazilians could not travel the country without safe conduct issued by the police. Over 200 Japanese schools were closed and radio equipment was seized to prevent transmissions on short wave from Japan. The goods of Japanese companies were confiscated and several companies of Japanese origin had interventions, including the newly founded Banco America do Sul. Japanese Brazilians were prohibited from driving motor vehicles, even if they were taxi drivers, buses, or trucks on their property. The drivers employed by Japanese had to have permission from the police. Thousands of Japanese immigrants were arrested or expelled from Brazil on suspicion of espionage. There were many anonymous denunciations because of activities against national security, arising from disagreements between neighbors, recovery of debts and even fights between children. Japanese Brazilians were arrested for suspicious activity when they were in artistic meetings or picnics. On July 10, 1943, approximately 10,000 Japanese and German immigrants who lived in Santos had 24 hours to close their homes and businesses and move away from the Brazilian coast. The police acted without any notice. About 90% of people displaced were Japanese. To reside in Baixada Santista, the Japanese had to have a safe conduct. In 1942, the Japanese community who introduced the cultivation of pepper in Tomei Akyu, in Para, was virtually turned into a concentration camp expression of the time from which no Japanese could leave. This time, the Brazilian ambassador in Washington, D.C., Carlos Martins Pereira e Souza, encouraged the government of Brazil to transfer all the Japanese Brazilians to internment camps. Without the need for legal support, in the same manner as was done with the Japanese residents in the United States. No single suspicion of activities of Japanese against national security was confirmed. Nowadays, nativism in Brazil affects primarily migrants from elsewhere in the Third World, such as the new wave of Levantine Arabs, this time, mostly Muslim from Palestine instead of overwhelmingly Christian from Syria and Lebanon, South and East Asians, primarily mainland Chinese, Spanish speakers, and Amerindians from neighboring South American countries, and, especially, West Africans and Haitians. 
Following the 2010 Haiti earthquake and considerable illegal immigration to northern Brazil and São Paulo, a subsequent debate in the population was concerned with the reasons why Brazil has such lax laws and enforcement concerning illegal immigration. According to the 1988's Brazilian constitution, it is an unbailable crime to address someone in an offensive racist way, and it is illegal to discriminate someone on the basis of his or her race, skin color, national or regional origin or nationality for more, see anti-discrimination laws in Brazil, thus nativism and opposition to multiculturalism would be too much of a polemic and delicate topic to be openly discussed as a basic ideology of even the most right-leaning modern political parties. Topic. Canada Nativism was common in Canada though the term originated in the U.S. It took several forms. Hostility to the Chinese and other Asians was intense, and involved provincial laws that hindered immigration of Chinese and Japanese and blocked their economic mobility. In 1942 Japanese Canadians were forced into detention camps in response to Japanese aggression in World War II. Throughout the 19th century, well into the 20th, the Orange Order in Canada attacked and tried to politically defeat the Irish Catholics. The Ku Klux Klan spread in the mid-1920s from the U.S. to parts of Canada, especially Saskatchewan, where it helped topple the Liberal government. The Klan creed was, historian Martin Robin argues, in the mainstream of Protestant Canadian sentiment, for it was based on "...Protestantism, separation of church and state, pure patriotism, restrictive and selective immigration, one national public school, one flag and one language—English." In World War I, Canadian naturalized citizens of German or Austrian origins were stripped of their right to vote, and tens of thousands of Ukrainians who were born in the Austro-Hungarian Empire were rounded up and put in internment camps. Hostility of native-born Canadians to competition from English immigrants in the early 20th century was expressed in signs that read, No English need apply. The resentment came because the immigrants identified more with England than with Canada. In the British Empire, traditions of anti Catholicism in Britain led to fears that Catholics were a threat to the national British values. In Canada, the Orange Order of Irish Protestants campaigned vigorously against the Catholics throughout the 19th century, often with violent confrontations. Both sides were immigrants from Ireland, and neither side claimed loyalty to Canada. The Orange Order was much less influential in the U.S., especially after a major riot in New York City in 1871. <laughs> Hong Kong Nativism in Hong Kong is often used as a synonymy with localism, which strives for the autonomy of Hong Kong and resist China's authorities' influence in the city. In addition to their strong anti-communist and pro-democracy tendency, it often holds a strong anti-mainland sentiments, especially the influx of the mainland tourists and immigrants, seeing them as a threat to Hong Kong identity and culture. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> European countries. For the Poles in the mining districts of western Germany before 1914, it was nationalism on both the German and the Polish sides, which kept Polish workers, who had established an associational structure approaching institutional completeness churches, voluntary associations, press, even unions, separate from the host German society. Lukasen found that religiosity and nationalism were more fundamental in generating nativism and inter-group hostility than the labor antagonism. Once Italian workers in France had understood the benefit of unionism and French unions were willing to overcome their fear of Italians as strikebreakers, integration was open for most Italian immigrants. The French state, which was always more of an immigration state than Prussia, Germany or Great Britain, fostered and supported family-based immigration and thus helped Italians on their immigration trajectory with minimal nativism. Many observers see the post-1950s wave of immigration in Europe was fundamentally different from the pre-1914 patterns. They debate the role of cultural differences, ghettos, race, Muslim fundamentalism, poor education and poverty play in creating nativism among the hosts and a caste-type underclass, more similar to white-black tensions in the U.S. Algerian migration to France has generated nativism, characterized by the prominence of Jean-Marie Le Pen and his National Front. Topic. Pakistan The Pakistani province of Sindh has seen nativist movements, promoting control for the Sindhi people over their homeland. 
After the 1947 partition of India, large numbers of Muhajir people migrating from India entered the province, becoming a majority in the provincial capital city of Karachi, which formerly had an ethnically Sindhi majority. Sindhis have also voiced opposition to the promotion of Urdu, as opposed to their native tongue, Sindhi. These nativist movements are expressed through Sindhi nationalism and the Sindhudesh separatist movement. Nativist and nationalist sentiments increased greatly after the independence of Bangladesh from Pakistan in 1971. Topic: <inaudible> Taiwan. Nativism flourished in Taiwan in the 1970s as a reaction against the influx of mainland Chinese to the island after the Kuomintang's defeat in 1949. Nativists felt that the political influence of mainland Chinese was disproportionately large. The term is especially found in the field of literature, where nativist literature was more traditionally minded than the modernist literature written largely by mainland Chinese. <laughs> United Kingdom London was notorious for its xenophobia in the 16th century, and conditions worsened in the 1580s. Many immigrants became disillusioned by routine threats of violence and molestation, attempts at expulsion of foreigners, and the great difficulty in acquiring English citizenship. Dutch cities proved more hospitable, and many left London permanently. Regarding the Irish in 20th century Great Britain, Lucasen argues that the deep religious divide between the Protestants and Catholics was at the core of the ongoing estrangement of the Irish in British society. <laughs> United States Topic. Early Republic Nativism was a political factor in the 1790s and in the 1830s to 1850s. There was little nativism in the colonial era, but for a while Benjamin Franklin was hostile to German Americans in colonial Pennsylvania, he called them Palatine Boers. However, he reversed himself and became a supporter. Nativism became a major issue in the late 1790s, when the Federalist Party expressed its strong opposition to the French Revolution by trying to strictly limit immigration, and stretching the time to 14 years for citizenship. At the time of the Quasi War with France in 1798, the Federalists and Congress passed the Alien and Sedition Acts, including the Alien Act, the Naturalization Act, and the Sedition Act. The movement was led by Alexander Hamilton, despite his own status as an immigrant from a small island. Philip McNeese argues that Hamilton's political career might legitimately be characterized as a sustained drift into nationalistic xenophobia. Thomas Jefferson and James Madison fought by drafting the Virginia and Kentucky resolutions. The two laws against aliens were motivated by fears of a growing Irish radical presence in Philadelphia, where they supported Jefferson. However, they were not actually enforced. President John Adams annoyed his fellow Federalists by making peace with France, and splitting his party in 1800. Jefferson was elected president, and reversed most of the hostile legislation. 1830–1860 The term, nativism, was first used by 1844. Thousands were naturalized expressly to oppose nativism, and voted the Pope ticket mainly to that end. Nativism gained its name from the Native American parties of the 1840s and 1850s. In this context, native does not mean indigenous Americans or American Indians but rather those descended from the inhabitants of the original 13 colonies. It impacted politics in the mid-19th century because of the large inflows of immigrants after 1845 from cultures that were different from the existing American culture. Nativists objected primarily to Irish Roman Catholics because of their loyalty to the Pope and also because of their supposed rejection of republicanism as an American ideal. Nativist movements included the Know Nothing or American Party of the 1850s, the Immigration Restriction League of the 1890s, the anti Asian movements in the West, resulting in the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 and the Gentlemen's Agreement of 1907, by which Japan's government stopped emigration to the United States. Labor unions were strong supporters of Chinese exclusion and limits on immigration, because of fears that they would lower wages and make it harder for workers to organize unions. Historian Eric Kaufman has suggested that American nativism has been explained primarily in psychological and economic terms due to the neglect of a crucial cultural and ethnic dimension. 
Furthermore, Kaufman claims that American nativism cannot be understood without reference to an American ethnic group which took shape prior to the large-scale immigration of the mid-18th century. Nativist outbursts occurred in the Northeast from the 1830s to the 1850s, primarily in response to a surge of Irish Catholic immigration. In 1836, Samuel Morse ran unsuccessfully for mayor of New York City on a nativist ticket, receiving 1,496 votes. In New York City, an Order of United Americans was founded as a nativist fraternity, following the Philadelphia nativist riots of the preceding spring and summer. In December, 1844, the nativists went public in 1854 when they formed the American Party, which was especially hostile to the immigration of Irish Catholics and campaigned for laws to require longer wait time between immigration and naturalization. The laws never passed. It was at this time that the term nativist first appears. Opponents denounced them as bigoted nativists." Former President Millard Fillmore ran on the American Party ticket for the presidency in 1856. The American Party also included many ex-Whigs who ignored nativism, and included in the South a few Catholics whose families had long lived in America. Conversely, much of the opposition to Catholics came from Protestant Irish immigrants and German Lutheran immigrants who were not native at all and can hardly be called nativists. This form of nationalism is often identified with xenophobia and anti-Catholic sentiment anti -papism. In Charlestown, Massachusetts, a nativist mob attacked and burned down a Catholic convent in 1834 no one was injured. In the 1840s, small-scale riots between Catholics and nativists took place in several American cities. In Philadelphia in 1844, for example, a series of nativist assaults on Catholic churches and community centers resulted in the loss of lives and the professionalization of the police force. In Louisville, Kentucky, Election Day rioters killed at least 22 people in attacks on German and Irish Catholics on August 6, 1855, in what became known as Bloody Monday. The new Republican Party kept its nativist element quiet during the 1860s, since immigrants were urgently needed for the Union Army. Immigrants from England, Scotland and Scandinavia favored the Republicans during the Third Party system, 1854-1896, while others were usually Democratic. Hostility toward Asians was very strong from the 1860s to the 1940s. Nativism experienced a revival in the 1890s, led by Protestant Irish immigrants hostile to Catholic immigration, especially the American Protective Association. <laughs> Anti-German nativism from the 1840s to 1920 German Americans were distrusted because of their separatist social structure, their German language schools, their attachment to their native tongue over English, and their neutrality during World War I. The Bennett Law caused a political uproar in Wisconsin in 1890, as the state government passed a law that threatened to close down hundreds of German language elementary schools. Catholic and Lutheran Germans rallied to defeat Governor William D. Horde. Horde attacked German-American culture and religion. We must fight alienism and selfish ecclesiasticism. The parents, the pastors and the church have entered into a conspiracy to darken the understanding of the children, who are denied by cupidity and bigotry the privilege of even the free schools of the state." Horde, a Republican, was defeated by the Democrats. A similar campaign in Illinois regarding the "'Edwards Law' led to a Republican defeat there in 1890. In 1917-1918, a wave of nativist sentiment led to the suppression of German cultural activities in the United States, Canada and Australia. There was little violence, but many places and streets had their names changed. The city of Berlin in Ontario was renamed Kitchener. After a British hero, churches switched to English for their services, and German Americans were forced to buy war bonds to show their patriotism. In Australia thousands of Germans were put into internment camps, see also, World War I anti-German sentiment. <inaudible> Anti-Chinese nativism In the 1870s in the western states Irish Americans targeted violence against Chinese workers, driving them out of smaller towns. Dennis Carney, an immigrant from Ireland, led a mass movement in San Francisco in the 1870s that incited attacks on the Chinese there and threatened public officials and railroad owners. 
The Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 was the first of many nativist acts of Congress which attempted to limit the flow of immigrants into the U.S. The Chinese responded to it by filing false claims of American birth, enabling thousands of them to immigrate to California. The exclusion of the Chinese caused the Western Railroads to begin importing Mexican railroad workers in greater numbers. Traqueros. 20th century In the 1890s to 1920s era nativists and labor unions campaigned for immigration restriction. A favorite plan was the literacy test to exclude workers who could not read or write their own foreign language. Congress passed literacy tests, but presidents—responding to business needs for workers—vetoed them. Senator Henry Cabot Lodge argued need for literacy tests and its implication on the new immigrants. It is found, in the first place, that the illiteracy test will bear most heavily upon the Italians, Russians, Poles, Hungarians, Greeks, and Asiatics, and lightly, or not at all, upon English-speaking emigrants, or Germans, Scandinavians, and French. In other words, the races most affected by the illiteracy test are those whose emigration to this country has begun within the last 20 years and swelled rapidly to enormous proportions, races with which the English-speaking people have never hitherto assimilated, and who are most alien to the great body of the people of the United States. Responding to these demands, opponents of the literacy test called for the establishment of an immigration commission to focus on immigration as a whole. The United States Immigration Commission, also known as the Dillingham Commission, was created and tasked with studying immigration and its effect on the United States. The findings of the commission further influenced immigration policy and upheld the concerns of the nativist movement. Following World War I, nativists in the 20s focused their attention on Catholics, Jews, and Southeastern Europeans and realigned their beliefs behind racial and religious nativism. The racial concern of the anti-immigration movement was linked closely to the eugenics movement that was sweeping the United States in the 20s. Led by Madison Grant's book, the passing of the great race nativists grew more concerned with the racial purity of the United States. In his book, Grant argued that the American racial stock was being diluted by the influx of new immigrants from the Mediterranean, the Balkans, and the ghettos. The passing of the great race reached wide popularity among Americans and influenced immigration policy in the 20s. In the 1920s a wide national consensus sharply restricted the overall inflow of immigrants, especially those from southern and eastern Europe. The second Ku Klux Klan, which flourished in the U.S. in the 1920s, used strong nativist rhetoric, but the Catholics led a counterattack. After intense lobbying from the nativist movement the United States Congress passed the Emergency Quota Act in 1921. This bill was the first to place numerical quotas on immigration. It capped the inflow of immigrations to 357,803 for those arriving outside of the Western Hemisphere. However, this bill was only temporary as Congress began debating a more permanent bill. The Emergency Quota Act was followed with the Immigration Act of 1924, a more permanent resolution. This law reduced the number of immigrants able to arrive from 357,803, the number established in the Emergency Quota Act, to 164,687. Though this bill did not fully restrict immigration, it considerably curbed the flow of immigration into the United States, especially from Southern and Eastern Europe. During the late 20s an average of 270,000 immigrants were allowed to arrive mainly because of the exemption of Canada and Latin American countries. Fear of low-skilled immigrants flooding the labor market was an issue in the 1920s focused on immigrants from Italy and Poland, and in the first decade of the 21st century focused on immigrants from Mexico and Central America. An immigration reductionism movement formed in the 1970s and continues to the present day. Prominent members often press for massive, sometimes total, reductions in immigration levels. American nativist sentiment experienced a resurgence in the late 20th century, this time directed at undocumented workers, largely Mexican resulting in the passage of new penalties against illegal immigration in 1996. Most immigration reductionists see illegal immigration, principally from across the United States-Mexico border, as the more pressing concern. Authors such as Samuel Huntington have also seen recent Hispanic immigration as creating a national identity crisis and presenting insurmountable problems for U.S. social institutions, noting the large scale Mexican immigration in the Southwest. The Cold War diplomat George F. Kennan in 2002 saw 
unmistakable evidences of a growing differentiation between the cultures, respectively, of large southern and southwestern regions of this country, on the one hand, and those of some northern regions. In the former, he warned, the very culture of the bulk of the population of these regions will tend to be primarily Latin American in nature rather than what is inherited from earlier American traditions. Could it really be that there was so little of merit in America that it deserves to be recklessly trashed in favor of a polyglot mix-mash? Mayers argues that Kennan represented the tradition of militant nativism that resembled or even exceeded the know-nothings of the 1850s. Mayers adds that Kennan also believed American women had too much power. 21st century By late 2014, the Tea Party movement had turned its focus away from economic issues, spending, and Obamacare, and towards President Barack Obama's immigration policies, which it saw as threatening to transform American society. It planned to defeat leading Republicans who supported immigration programs, such as Senator John McCain. A typical slogan appeared in the Tea Party Tribune Amnesty for Millions, Tyranny for All. The New York Times reported, what started five years ago as a groundswell of conservatives committed to curtailing the reach of the federal government, cutting the deficit and countering the Wall Street wing of the Republican Party has become a movement largely against immigration overhaul. The politicians, intellectual leaders and activists who consider themselves part of the Tea Party have redirected their energy from fiscal austerity and small government to stopping any changes that would legitimize people who are here illegally, either through granting them citizenship or legal status. In his 2016 bid for presidency, Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump has been accused of introducing nativist themes for his controversial stances on temporarily banning foreign Muslims from entering the United States and erecting a substantial wall between the U.S. Mexico border to halt illegal immigration. Journalist John Cassidy wrote in The New Yorker Trump is transforming the GOP into a populist, nativist party. Trump has been drawing on a base of alienated white working class and middle class voters, seeking to remake the GOP into a more populist, nativist, avowedly protectionist, and semi-isolationist party that is skeptical of immigration, free trade, and military interventionism. Donald Brand, a professor of political science, argues, Donald Trump's nativism is a fundamental corruption of the founding principles of the Republican Party. Nativists champion the purported interests of American citizens over those of immigrants, justifying their hostility to immigrants by the use of derogatory stereotypes. Mexicans are rapists, Muslims are terrorists. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Language. American nativists have promoted English and deprecated the use of German and Spanish. English-only proponents in the late 20th century proposed an English Language Amendment a constitutional amendment making English the official language of the United States, but it received limited political support. See also References Topic. Further reading Alexiev, Mikhail A. Immigration Phobia and the Security Dilemma, Russia, Europe, and the United States Cambridge University Press, 2005, 294 pp. Art, David. Inside the Radical Right, the Development of Anti-Immigrant Parties in Western Europe Cambridge University Press, 2011, 288 pp, examines anti-immigration activists and political candidates in 11 countries. Betz, Hans Georg. Against the Green Totalitarianism, Anti-Islamic Nativism in Contemporary Radical Right-Wing Populism in Western Europe. In Christina Shori Liang, ed. Europe for the Europeans, 2007. Siupans, Bambi. Alecthans, Colonizers, and Scroungers, Exclusionary Populism in Belgium. African Studies Review, Vol. 49 No. 2, September 2006, pp. 147-86 doi, 10.1353, ARW.2006.0102. Alecthans means giving welfare benefits only to those groups that are considered to truly belong. Chin, Jeff, and Robert Kaiser, eds. Russians as the New Minority, Ethnicity and Nationalism in the Soviet Successor States 1996. 
Franket, Jenny. Roads to Rome, The Antebellum Protestant Encounter with Catholicism 1994. Fincha, Norbert, and Dietmar Schirmer, eds. Identity and Intolerance, Nationalism, Racism, and Xenophobia in Germany and the United States 2002. Gronfeld, D. The Future of Indigenous Values, Cultural Relativism in the Face of Economic Development. Futures, 35 No. 9 2003, pp. 917–29. Jensen, Richard. Comparative Nativism, The United States, Canada and Australia, 1880s–1910s. Canadian Journal for Social Research 2010, Vol. 3 No. 1 pp. 45–55 Lucasen, Leo. The Immigrant Threat, The Integration of Old and New Migrants in Western Europe Since 1850. University of Illinois Press, 2005. 280 pp. ISBN 0-252-07294-4. Examines Irish immigrants in Britain, Polish immigrants in Germany, Italian immigrants in France before 1940, and since 1950, Caribbeans in Britain, Turks in Germany, and Algerians in France. Liang, Christina Shori, ed. Europe for the Europeans, 2007. McNally, Mark. Proving the Way, Conflict and Practice in the History of Japanese Nativism 2005, Mamdani, M. When Victims Become Killers, Colonialism, Nativism and the Genocide in Rwanda 2001, Rose, Richard. The End of Consensus in Austria and Switzerland, Journal of Democracy, Vol. 11 No. 2, April 2000, pp. 26–40 Wertheimer, Jack. Unwelcome Strangers, East European Jews in Imperial Germany 1991 topic United States Allerfeld, Christopher. Race, Radicalism, Religion, and Restriction, Immigration in the Pacific Northwest, 1890–1924. Prager, 2003. 235 pp. Anbinder, Tyler. Nativism and Prejudice Against Immigrants, in A Companion to American Immigration, ed., by Reed 2006, pp. 177-201 Online excerpt Barkhan, Elliot R. Return of the Nativists? California Public Opinion and Immigration in the 1980s and 1990s, Social Science History 2003-27, 2, 229-83. ISSN 0145-5532 in Project Muse Billington, Ray Allen. The Protestant Crusade, 1800-1860, A Study of the Origins of American Nativism 1964, online Hamilton, Jean. The Nunnery as Menace, The Burning of the Charlestown Convent, 1834, U.S. Catholic Historian 1996-14 No. 1 pp. 35-65 Higgum, John, Strangers in the Land, Patterns of American Nativism, 1860-1925 The Standard Scholarly History Houston, Robert Francis. The Catholic Press and Nativism, 1840-1860 Huggy, Matthew W. Show Me Your Papers. Obama's Birth and the Whiteness of Belonging, Qualitative Sociology 35, 2, 163-81 2012, Kaufman, Eric. American Exceptionalism Reconsidered, Anglo-Saxon Ethnogenesis in the Universal Nation, 1776-1850, Journal of American Studies, 33, 1999, 3, pp. 437-57. Leonard, Ira M. and Robert D. Parme. American Nativism 1830-1860 Lubke, Frederick C. Bonds of Loyalty, German Americans and World War I 1974, OXX, Katie. The Nativist Movement in America, Religious Conflict in the Nineteenth Century 2013, Schrag Peter. Not Fit for Our Society, Immigration and Nativism in America University of California Press, 2010 256 pp. Online Topic Canada Houston, Cecil J. and Smith, William J. The Sash Canada War, A Historical Geography of the Orange Order in Canada. U. of Toronto Press, 1980. McLaughlin, Robert. Irish Nationalism and Orange Unionism in Canada, a reappraisal, IR Ireland 41.3 and 4-2007-80-109 McLean, Lorna. To Become Part of Us, Ethnicity, Race, Literacy and the Canadian Immigration Act of 1919. Canadian Ethnic Studies 2004-36-2, 1-28. 
ISSN 0008-3496 Miller, J. R. Equal Rights, The Jesuits' Estates Act Controversy 1979, in late 19C Canada Palmer, Howard. Patterns of Prejudice, A History of Nativism in Alberta 1992, Robin, Martian. Shades of Right, Nativist and Fascist Politics in Canada, 1920–1940 University of Toronto Press, 1992, C. S. W. Riots in New Brunswick, Orange Nativism and Social Violence in the 1840s Univ of Toronto Press, 1993. Ward, W. Peter. White Canada Forever, Popular Attitudes and Public Policy Toward Orientals in British Columbia 1978. External links Dennis Carney Henry A. Rhodes Nativist and Racist Movements in the U.S. and Their Aftermath. Dennis Carney, President, and H. L. Knight, Secretary. Appeal from California. The Chinese Invasion. Workingman's Address. Indianapolis Times, 28 February 1878. A Nation or Notion. By Patrick J. Buchanan, Op-Ed, October 4, 2006. A Conservative Defense of Nativism. Politicosladinos.com videos of 2008 U.S. presidential election candidates' positions regarding immigration. Anti-immigration groups and the masks of false diversity. False diversity in anti-immigration organizations. A defense of nativism, conservative heritage times.